Lebahamath to the Dead Sea, in accordance with the word of the Lord, the God of Israel, spoken through his servant Jonah, son of Amittiah, Amidia, the prophet from gath -Hefer. the Lord had seen how bitterly everyone in Israel, whether slave or free, was suffering, and there was no one to help them. And since the Lord had not said he would, he would blot out the name of Israel from under heaven, he saved them by the hand of Jeroboam, son of Jehoash. As for the other events of Jeroboam's reign, all he did in his military achievements, including how he recovered for Israel both Damascus and Hamath, which had belonged to Judah, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Jeroboam rested with his ancestors, the kings of Israel, and Zechariah, Zechariah, his son, succeeded him as king, Azariah, king of Judah, chapter 15. In the twenty-seventh year of Jeroboam, the king of Israel, Azariah, son of son of Amaziah, king of Judah, began to reign. He was sixteen years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem fifty-two years. His mother's name was Jekuliah. She was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Amaziah had done. The high place, how the high places, however, were not removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burnt incense there. The Lord afflicted the king with leprosy until the day he died, and he lived in a separate house. Jotham, the king's son, had charge of the palace and governed the people of the land. As for the other events of Azariah's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Azariah rested with his ancestors and was buried near them in the city of David. And Jotham, his son, succeeded him as king. Zechariah, king of Israel. In the thirtieth eight, in the thirty-eighth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Zechariah, son of Jeroboam, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned six months. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, as his predecessor, as his predecessors had done. He did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. Shalom, son of Jabesh, conspired against Zechariah. He attacked him in front of the people, assassinated him, and succeeded him as king. The other events of Zechariah's reign are written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel. So the word of the Lord spoken to Jehu was fulfilled. Your descendants will sit on the throne of Israel to the fourth generation. Shalom, king of Israel. Shalom, son of Jabesh, became king in the 39th year of the Uzziah, king of Judah, and he reigned in Samaria one month. Then Mahanaim, son of Gadi, went from Terza up to Samaria. He attacked Shalom, son of Jabush, and Samaria assassinated him and succeeded him as king. Other events of Shalom's reign and the conspiracy he led are written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel. At that time, Menahem, starting out from Terza, attacked Tisbaya and everyone in the city and its vicinity because they refused to open their gates. He sacked Tipsaya and ripped open all the pregnant women. Mechanem, king of Israel, in the thirty-ninth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Mechanem, son of Gadi, became king of Israel, and he reigned in Samaria ten years. He did evil, he did evil in the eyes of the Lord during his entire reign. He did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Debar, which he had caused Israel to commit. Then Paul, king of Assyria, invaded the land, and Menahem gave him a thousand talents of silver to gain his support and strengthen his own hold on the kingdom. Mechanem exacted his money, this money from Israel. Every wealthy person had to contribute 50 shekels of silver to be given to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria withdrew and stayed in the land no longer. As for the other events of Mahanam's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Menahem rested with his ancestors and Pekiah, his son, succeeded him as king. Pekiah, king of Israel, in the, 15, in the 50th year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekiah, son of Menahem, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned two years. Pekiah did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nabat, which he had caused Israel to commit. One of his chief officers, Pekah, son of Ramalia, conspired against him, taking fifty men of Galeed with him. He assassinated Pekiah, along with Argob and Arya, in the citadel of the royal palace at Samaria. So Pekah killed Pekiah and succeeded him as king. The other events of Bekiah's reign and all he did are written in the, in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel. Pekah, king of Israel. In the fifty-second year of Azariah, king, king of Judah, Pekah, son of Ramalia, became king of Israel in, in Samaria, and he reigned twenty years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Debar, which he had caused Israel to commit. In the time of Pekah, son of king of Israel, Tigloth, Pilzer, king of Assyria, came and took Ijon, Abel, Beth, Maka, John Owen, Kadesh, and Hazor. He 
he took Galid and Galilee, including all the land of Naphtali, and deported all the people to Assyria. And then Hoshea, son of Aliyah, conspired against Pekah, son of Ramalia. He attacked and assassinated him, and then succeeded him as king in the twentieth year of John, son of Uziah. That's what the other events of Pekah's reign, and all he did. Are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Mm -hmm. Jotham, king of Judah. In the second year of Pekah, son of Ramalia, king of Judah, Jotham, son of Uziah, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 16 years. His mother's name was Jerosha, son of daughter of Zaduk. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, and just as his father Uziah had done, the high places that were not removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. Jotham rebuilt the upper gate of the temple of the Lord. As for the other events of Jotham's reign and what he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? In those days the Lord began to send a reason king of Aram and Pekah, son of Ramalia, against Judah. Jotham rested with his ancestors and was buried with them in the city of David, the city of his father, and Ahaz, his son, succeeded him as king. Ahaz, king of Judah, chapter 16. In the seventeenth year of Pekah, son of Ramalia, Ahaz, son of Johan, Jotham, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaz was twenty years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem sixteen years. Unlike David, his father, he did not do what was right in the eyes of the Lord his God. He followed the ways of his of the kings of Israel, and even sacrificed his son in the fire, engaging in the detestable practices of the nations the Lord has driven up before the Israelites. He offered sacrifices and burned incense at the high places on the hilltops and under every spreading tree. Then Rezin, king of Aram, and Pekah, son of Ramalia, king of Israel, marched up to fight against Jerusalem and besieged Ahaz, but they cannot overpower him. At that time, Rezin, king of Aram, recovered a loth for Aram by driving out the people of Judah. Edomites then moved into Aloth and have lived there to this day. Ahaz sent messengers to say to Tegloth, Hildir, king of Assyria, I am your servant in Vassal. Come up and save me out of the, land, the hand of the king of Aram and of the king of Israel who are attacking me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold found in the temple of the Lord and in the treasuries of the royal palace and sent it as a gift to the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria combined by attacking Damascus and capturing it. He deported its inhabitants to Kir and put reason to death. Then King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tigloth, Pelzir, king of Assyria. He saw an altar in Damascus and sent to the Uriah the priest a sketch of the altar with detailed plans for its construction. So Uriah the priest built an altar in accordance with all the plans that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus and finished it before King Ahaz returned. When the king came back from Damascus and saw the altar, he approached it and presented offerings on it. He offered up his burnt offering and grain offering, poured out his drink offering, and splashed the blood of his fellow fellowship offerings against the altar. As for the bronze altar that stood before the Lord, he brought it he brought it from the front of the temple, from between the new altar and the temple of the Lord, and put it on the north side of the new of the new altar. King Ahaz then gave these new gave these orders to Uriah the priest. On the large new altar offer the morning burnt offering and the evening grain offering, and the king's burnt offering, and his grain offering, and the burnt offering of all people of the land, and all, and their grain offering, and their drink offering. Splash against this altar the blood of all the burnt offerings and sacrifices, but I will use bronze, the bronze altar for seeking guidance. And Ori the priest did, it, did just as the king Ahaz had ordered. King Ahaz cut off the side panels and removed the basins from the movable stands. He removed the sea from the bronze bowls that supported it and set it on a stone base. He took away the Sabbath canopy that had been built at the temple and removed the royal entryway outside the temple of the Lord in deference to the king of Assyria. As for the other events of the reign of Ahaz and what he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Ahaz rested with his ancestors and was buried with them in the city of David, and Hezekiah, his son, succeeded him as king. Hoshea, last king of Israel. Chapter 17. In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, Hoshea, son of Elah, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned nine years. He did evil not, he did evil in the eyes of the Lord, but not like the kings of Israel who preceded him. Shalminiasur, king of Assyria, came up to attack Hoshea, who had been Shamalaniyar's vassal, and had paid him tribute. The king of Assyria discovered that Hoshea was a traitor, for he had sent envoys to Saul, king of Egypt, and he no longer paid tribute to the king of Assyria. And he had done year by year. Therefore, Shalmaneser seized him and put him in prison. The king of Assyria invited the entire land, marched against Samaria, 
and laid its siege, the lead siege to it for three years. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria, he captured Samaria and deported the Israelites to Assyria. He settled them in Hala and Gozan on the Habu 